mug in hand, got some water today. Hey, make sure you all are staying hydrated. That's important. Mm. Perfect. Okay. I've been a video editor slash videographer for almost three years now. And the first two years of that were entirely dedicated to Premiere Pro. Now, thankfully through some support and making the final decision to change and switch over to DaVinci Resolve, I can say after been using it for nearly six months that I wish I would have done it sooner. Here's why. And also, stay tuned to the end of the video. I have a fun tip for you if you're hoping to pick up or purchase the DaVinci Resolve Studio version. Number one, organization and consistency. Now in, in Premiere Pro, you have what we call workspaces where essentially you can customize your window to be whatever you want it to be. Lots of different panels and tabs that you can bring in and you can save it as such. And that way you can always reference back to it when you need it. Now, what I found though and was really frustrating is it was so inconsistent and glitched half the time. I had a project setting tab that always would move and, and join somewhere else or I couldn't have it you know, combined and I would rework my workspaces, I would save them again, I would reset Premiere Pro and time after time again, it would glitch. And with Premiere Pro, it would just crash randomly. I don't even understand why. It wasn't like I was pushing it through its paces or my computer couldn't handle what I was working in. Premiere Pro just decided that, hey, I'm done. See you later. You've got to reboot me and hope it saved everything that you were working on or that I had saved earlier enough. And those things just frustrated me. I, as a video editor, as a videographer, as a solo creator, I need my tools to be not only consistent, but reliable. I need to be able to work on them and not be fighting them constantly to get them to work. DaVinci Resolve really solved a lot of these organizational and consistent problems. I've got those tabs in the bottom that are locked. At first, I was kind of stressed that it wasn't going to be, you know, flexible enough, but I've actually grown to love them. It's rigid. I know whenever I open up DaVinci that this is how it's going to look and I know exactly where everything is now. There's no guessing. There's no, oh, this moved again or I have to try to rework this. And two, yes, DaVinci Resolve, I have had it crash once in a while. I was reading a lot of stuff that said DaVinci crashed almost never for people. It's false. It definitely crashes for me once in a while, but I find it far less and far less aggravating and I wasn't stressed out because it has an, a great autosave feature that always makes sure my work is kept up. And the greatest part about these tabs is I have all of this in one place, which leads me to my second point. These tabs are essentially multiple programs all built into one. Now, when I was working with Premiere Pro, if I wanted to do lots of motion graphics or heavily edit my audio, I'd have to then move to After Effects and Adobe Audition. I don't have to do that with DaVinci Resolve. I have three pages specifically that I absolutely have come to adore and love. Number one, we've got the Fusion page. Now, I know for some of you, layers and nodes, they don't quite make sense. They're kind of hard to grasp. It feels like I'm trying to pull things into weird places and connect them and it doesn't make sense. After watching a good handful of hours of tutorials, Fusion is starting to make more sense to me and I actually kind of like how the nodes flow and where you can really start to see problems and mistakes arise. The other page I really enjoy is the Fairlight page and that essentially is what Adobe Audition is in DaVinci Resolve. And it's a great tool for me and it's actually made my audio editing significantly faster for a couple of reasons. One, and here's a tip if you're ever editing audio, you're always equalizing it or adding an EQ and you're always compressing it. It's a constant thing you have to do and what I have always done in all the projects I've ever worked on that has included some sort of voiceover. Now, in Premiere Pro, what's really annoying is you have these little tabs, you have little windows, you have to drop down and like select several things to get to where equalizer and compressor even are. And you do that for every single clip. But in Fairlight, it's automatically built in. You have an equalizer and a compressor automatically built to every track you add to your timeline. And that's a super ideal. It means I just click activate it. I'm already working it, making sure my audio sounds clean and good, and I'm moving on. Or it's just like in the edit page where on my video track, uh, I don't always have to be adding a dip to black or a constant power or a or a cross dissolve. Those are actually built into DaVinci Resolve. So when you look at your track, these little tabs on the side, you can click and drag them, and they automatically add those things. That just, to me, feels like a company who knows what their users are doing and doing a lot of and want to make sure that's as easy and streamlined for them as possible, which I really appreciate. And all these small things add up to save a lot of time when I'm constantly editing videos. And lastly, the color page. Really, what a remarkable tool to have. It's used by literal Hollywood production companies. You have all these tools that are built for people who edit and color grade incredible cinema 
featured movies. Now, I know me as a solo creator, I'm not going to be using all of the tools, nor do I have access to the level and quality of footage that they use, but why wouldn't you want to have access to those things to work with? I found that I actually really enjoy the fact that DaVinci Resolve has tabs that feel like you are fully committing to what you're working on. Whenever I was editing in Premiere and I had to go to color grading, you have like this little Lumetri color tab that pops up to the right side. It didn't feel like it was dedicated to what I was doing. But when I'm working in DaVinci Resolve and I hit that color page, that tab on there, it feels like I am 100% committed to color grading and I have so many tools and things to, to work with and it helps me get in the zone to what I'm working on. And I think that's a really big plus. As a solo creator, you know, there's a lot of stuff we have to do and sometimes our attention can be brought a thousand different ways. But when I'm in the color page, I know I'm not editing, I'm not cutting, I'm not changing audio. I'm solely working with color and it gives you so many amazing tools to be able to do that. And my last point is the cost. Now I know there's a, there's a free version of DaVinci Resolve and it's great. It has a lot of tools that you would need when you're starting in your video editing career. In fact, I highly recommend if you're even thinking of going that route, you might as well try the free version. But let's break down the cost of if you wanted to go for the studio version of DaVinci Resolve or pay for Premiere Pro slash Creative Cloud depending on the cost. To break down the cost, I checked the websites literally today to make sure my costs are as up to date as they possibly can be. As of recording this video, for the Premiere Pro package, just to have Premiere Pro itself from Adobe, it costs $28.32 Canadian per month. Now, if you wanna add Adobe Edition to that and After Effects, you're adding another $28.32, all three of those. Now, that gets pretty expensive pretty quickly, which usually means you're gonna be jumping over to the Creative Cloud bundle, which is all the apps Adobe has to offer, which is for around $74 per month. Not cheap, but you do have access to a lot of apps. I'll give it that. Now I do know there is a student discount for the Creative Cloud subscription. So if you're, if you're in university, I highly recommend checking that out. I believe the cost comes down to $45 or so. So it's important to keep in mind. Now DaVinci Resolve, the studio version costs $425 for the just the studio license, which gives you access to two different computers kind of thing. But let's do some math very quickly. For this $74.19, how long will it take till that package costs more than what you're gonna pay for DaVinci Resolve? takes about six months, half a year, and you'll be paying more than you ever would be with DaVinci Resolve. And you own DaVinci Resolve Studio forever. All the updates, all those things come included when you buy into that package. Seems like kind of a no brainer for me there. Now I also understand you get all the apps with Adobe Creative Cloud. So that might seem like something that you want to go with. But my recommendation would be get the studio version for DaVinci Resolve. And then if you need Photoshop or Illustrator, you can buy those separately at the, like the $28.32 Canadian a month to use for those anyways, which means you still have access to that that specific tool. But if I'm editing DaVinci, I don't need Premiere Pro and After Effects. I don't need any of those things because all of it is built in and something that I've really come to enjoy that it's all built in. Because really as a solo creator, I just want to help you save money in whatever you're doing. Now you might be wondering what's included in the paid version, the, the studio version of DaVinci Resolve compared to the free version. Now there's just a couple of things that I brought to my attention that I think are important for you to know. There's actually a good handful list. I just recommend you looking online to see what's, what's out there and what really affects your needs. But a couple that really affected me was one, you're locked at a 4K timeline, 60 frames per second. You can't go above that by any means. Uh, two, I actually found that with my A7S III specifically, I always film in 10-bit. I just like working with more color. Uh, DaVinci Resolve, the free version, cannot handle 10-bit color whatsoever. And lastly, you don't get any third-party OFX plugins. So essentially that means if you're getting plugins for Fusion or Fairlight or any of those things, I have a denoiser I bought from Waves way back when when I was working with Premiere Pro that I wanted to use in Resolve. Again, any of those third-party plugins you cannot use in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So you need the studio version to do that. I'll give you this. I was really nervous to switch from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. And thanks to my good friend Levi who helped convince me to try it. And I'm very grateful for that because it has become something I actually enjoy working in. And I think as a solar creator, that's a really important part. I really want to enjoy the process of making videos and if I'm constantly struggling to fight the program or opening more programs or it's costing me way too much per month to be able to use, it takes away from the, the fun and joy of making videos. If you are looking to get the studio version, if you buy anything on Blackmagic Design's website, whether it be a camera or an editing keyboard, you automatically get a license to the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. 
and you get two licenses. So that's my best tip if you're looking to get studio. Uh, if you are already wanting to invest in that sphere of cameras, you're gonna get some licenses anyway. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, uh, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Last week, again, we hit almost 600 views, which is crazy that we did it again. Uh, really thankful and I appreciate every single one of you and I'll be seeing you all next week. Bye everybody. Need more water, I drank all of it while filming today. Stay hydrated, yeah.